Jameson Wellness Inc., uh, JWEL on the TSX, currently trading at a price of around $25. I believe it's actually up a little bit today as we're recording this with a $1.04 billion market cap and a forward dividend yield of about 3%. So they actually just recently increased that uh, dividend slightly. Uh, by a couple cents, their quarterly dividend, but I'll get into that. Uh, So Jameson Wellness develops, manufactures, distributes, markets, and sells natural health products, including vitamins, herbal and mineral uh, nutritional supplements for humans in Canada, the United States of America, and internationally. Uh, I have some of their their vitamins in my own uh, uh, cupboard in my bathroom, (laughs) of course. Um, So (laughs) <laughs> Moving on. Why are you laughing, Ryan? I don't know. Uh, just the way you said it. Right? <laughs> uh, but yes, I am uh, a, a consumer of their vitamins. Um, so looking at uh, a few of their Q2 highlights, this does this slide does come directly from the company's investor presentation. Uh, I'm just going to go over a few of the highlights here. So number two, on July 19th of 2022, the company acquired a company called NutraWise Health and Beauty Corp., which sells supplements under the U Theory, uh, or yeah, the U Theory brand uh, for approximately 265 million Canadian. Uh, now, the acquisition was made uh, essentially to provide the company with an expansion plan into the U.S. Uh, and they noted in Q2 that new SKUs have began to ship. Now, as well, number three, the company also recently acquired the assets of its own Chinese distributor for uh, Canadian 200 or 26 million uh, in May of 2023. Uh, so that's, you know, they're looking for more growth in China there. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to mention here was just the number six down at the bottom. Uh, the company recently increased their dividend from 17 cents uh, per quarter to 19 cents per quarter, uh, which is great. The company has been increasing it every single year uh, since 2018. Now, looking at the actual financials here, uh, the company's Q2 2023 uh, results uh, were strong, uh, with revenue up 50% year over year to 167.8 million. Now, this was due to about 4% organic growth for the Jameson brands, uh, as well as uh, its acquisition uh, and the sale of U Theory products uh, in the U.S. So that was, you know, primarily what the growth was uh, r- related to. Now, adjusted EBITDA was up twenty seven percent year over year to thirty one point one million, uh, and we saw basically a bit of a reduce in the EBITDA margin here due to lower gross profit margins, as well as the integration of U Theory. Uh, and adjusted diluted EPS was flat year over year at thirty two cents. Uh, the balance sheet does look healthy with net debt of about $253.7 million and a net debt to adjusted EBITDA multiple about 1.9 times. So uh, as Ryan said, the company did recently just kind of uh, bring down their guidance a little bit. So uh, looking forward, uh, the company reduced the upper end of their guidance from revenue growth of 28% now down to about 26% at the at the high end as well with adjusted ebitda margins now uh between 13 to 16% rather than the previous 13 to 18% that they were guiding to towards and management noted that the reason for the trimming of top end guidance uh, is due to post pandemic trends the company is seeing in Canada and internationally as certain retailers manage Uh, Their inventory and international markets manage uh, through the backlog of uh, new product regulatory approvals. Um, Looking at adjusted EPS here, uh, this was also revised downward and it wasn't just the upper end here. Uh, uh, They moved it to a range of $1.56 to $1.63, which represents uh, about flat to 5% growth. And previously they were looking at about five to 11% growth. So this is a substantial, uh, you know, decline here revision and on a forward basis, uh, utilizing, uh, their adjusted EPS, uh, guidance, uh, the company trades at about 16 times, uh, forward adjusted diluted earnings. Um, and based on its quarterly dividend of 19 cents per share or about 76 cents per year, uh, the company's forward payout ratio is expected to be about uh, just under 50%.
So to conclude here, I think that Jameson is interesting. The company is guiding to grow revenue at a great d- double digit pace this year, but reduce the upper end of its guidance and adjusted earnings profitability lower. Now the balance sheet remains healthy. The company has increased the dividend every year since 2018, paying an attractive 3% forward yield right now with a healthy payout ratio. The company appears to trade a reasonable multiple and has a runway of growth opportunities in both the US, China, and internationally. Um, But essentially, I think that it's crucial here just to see and dig in a little bit further uh, on the growth drivers uh, for 2024 to see if, you know, their end customers are, you know, getting that inventory down uh, and to see uh, what kind of growth we will be looking at to see if that adjusted earnings uh, multiple is uh, justified or not. Um, But yeah, I mean, they've been increasing that dividend, great dividend payer. Uh, love to see that over the long term. Um, yeah, I'll open it up to you guys. I guess in terms of EPS growth, uh, it looks solid for like 2018, they had, uh, 60 cents then 2019, mm-hmm. 74 on a normalized basis, a dollar two in 2020, $1.16, 2021, 2022, a dollar 29. And now the trailing is a dollar 18. So it's the first time they've taken, seen a step back in terms of per share earnings, um, you know, I'd love to know their outlook. I, I guess they don't have a published outlook for 2024. It's just for this current year. Uh, if they, if we saw they were looking for 15 to 20 percent revenue growth, and you know, back to 15, 25, or something percent EPS growth, then you know, you can pay 15 times earnings for that. If you know they're going to stay on this like zero to five percent EPS growth rate. Um, you know, you know, it's probably fairly valued or you don't want to pay 15 times earnings or for it or anything above that. So if they can get back to the growth rate they had for about a four year stretch there as a public entity, they look great. You know, it could be a business to own. If not, it's not essentially is what I would, the way I'd sum it up. Yeah. Aaron, do you, I was going to just say too, an Brandon? interesting defensive company kind of, you know, uh, like there's a lot of uncertainty in the markets. I don't know if people mm-hmm. are just going to stop eating vitamins. Um, you know, or I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, maybe not. But I mean, there is some discretionary in there too. Like some people, you know, it's not um, like an iron supplement. I don't think that they're selling that you need because you need have an iron deficiency. I think it's, I think I want to have, you know, better collagen. So, or I yeah. think I want my... I want eyebrows to grow faster. So I'm going to take this. I want vitamin D because my hair is falling Or there's a nail. Yeah. Or you want, or you want, somebody wants more calcium. But I mean, if, if, you know, all, all, a lot of these things, if you do eat a balanced diet, you can get them from, right? So, Mm -hmm. but you know, like if they're doing that, you know, maybe people, it is somewhat discretionary, but probably not as discretionary as some other items like a a 15th pair of shoes or something like that. (laughs) Yeah. Although- you know, some people, those aren't so discretionary then. Yep. Brennan's one of them. Yep. Talk to shoes. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll side with Ryan here. It's, it's interesting. Fundamentals generally look pretty good. Historic growth is good, but now, you know, we've seen a hiccup in the, in the earnings growth. Let's just, you know, see another quarter come out, get a revised update for, uh, for the next year and see if they get back on track with the bottom line. Yeah. And if you had, 13 to if you were trading 13 15 times below market multiple and we thought they could grow 15 plus percent uh going forward and the payout ratio is reasonable and we think they can pay down that debt reasonably then it it is interesting um but uh you know th- this is a hiccup in terms of per share earnings uh for the growth rate this year you're looking good revenue growth largely by acquisition but you got to be able to drive that to per share earnings too and uh, there are some margin compression here and uh, you know we'd have to watch that going forward to see if we can have better cash flow, better earnings on the business. And if they are, then it could become interesting for sure. 